Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to the Sunshine State of Florida. We're going to try this again here. Round number six, the continuation of round number six from the Homestead Miami Speedway. It is the Miami Gardens 300, and it is the Sim Racers Edge Alpha Series. Good evening, everybody. My name is Frank Marchese. Thank you very much for making us a part of your evening here, and we thank you for splitting your time uh, between this race and the Endurance for Beginners race, which is currently running at Silverstone right now. Uh, and as I said here, we are continuing round number six of the Sim Racers Edge Alpha Series season. Uh, if you remember back about a month ago, this, uh, this series was here for, again, what would have been their sixth round. However, connection issues caused the race to stop prematurely uh, on lap 33. After disconnection issues on lap 30, they decided that they could not uh, get the situation fixed, so they decided to postpone the race until this, which would have been a scheduled off week for the series prior to uh, the running of the first attempt of this Miami Gardens 300. Tonight we will try again here with this race and hopefully we will get it in this time. We will be cutting off the uh, the first 30 laps as we had already run. So the process for tonight uh, will be that drivers will be starting in the order that they were running in on lap 30. So Chris Samard uh, in the number 77 will be on the pole tonight, seeing as though he was the leader. Uh, Jeff Hollingsworth, the same thing. He will be starting in second because I, if I remember right, I believe it was Hollingsworth. Uh, pardon me, it was Bentley Glazer, my bad. Uh, Bentley Glazer will be starting in second because he was in second on lap 30. Uh, drivers that did not start in that race, of which there are a couple, and we will name them. Oh, my goodness. I, uh, wow. <laughs> that, um, well, that was a big one. Um, <laughs> anyway, continuing on. Uh, drivers that were not there for that race will be starting at the back of the field here tonight. And since the field is already set, they will not be running a qualifying session. They will not be running a warm-up session here tonight. So after the 6 minutes and 25 seconds are up here in this practice session, we will go straight to the 170-lap race here that we have in store for you tonight that was suspended from all the way back on March 17th. So we are quite a ways away, almost a calendar month exactly, uh, from when this race should have been completed to when it will be completed. Uh, before we get too far into tonight, I would like to remind you, coming up on ESPN, again, if you want to open up another tab, uh, on your uh, on your internet browser to watch the endurance for beginners. They are about 10 minutes into their one hour and 20 minute race from Silverstone. Uh, expect it to be a very good race there this week, as they were as it was last week at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. Tomorrow night will be the Dob doubleheader. The 410 Sprint Cars will be at Lima Land Speedway, and immediately following that will be the Big Block Series. They will be at Cedar Lake. Then we are off on Friday and on Saturday, both the uh, Circle B Diecast Super Speedway Series and the E-Formula 3.5 Series will be off this weekend. So our next race will be a new series, the Medieval Racing League's Daytona 500, starting at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And then on Monday night, we'll be, uh, we will be back with the Rowdy Energy Cup Series at uh, at Richmond for the third of three consecutive road course races. That will start at 8.20 p.m. Eastern Time. We'll take a quick look at the standings heading into this running 
of the Miami Gardens 300. Nate Siefker with a very comfortable lead right now, 57 points. Uh, his points lead over Chris Samard right now, and Siefker has won two of the last three races, one at Chicago Land two weeks ago, and then one at Spa Frankershon last week. So Siefker looking for his third consecutive win. Meanwhile, Siefker is looking to try to bring some points back out of that 57-point uh, gap by starting on the pole here tonight. Jeff Hollingsworth, Jeffrey Bogan, and Bentley Glazer rounding out the top five in the point standings. A couple of newcomers to the series will find their names a little bit lower down. Shane Loveridge, the first of the drivers that will be running. Uh, and we will be uh, discussing that here momentarily once we get done with the points. Who will be starting where here tonight as far as newcomers to the series and where those guys will be and who's going to be where uh, at the start of this race here tonight. Uh, and before we do that, let's take a look at something we haven't really paid much attention to uh, this season, which is the team standings. Only six teams in the running for the championship. And while Nate Siefker's lead is pretty secure up at the top of the individual standings, his team's championship uh, is quite close. It's only nine points separating Voodoo Racing from OGR. RDR is right there as well in a very comfortable third position right at the moment. VSM Racing, FBR, and Jawburn, uh, Jawbone Motorsports gaining points with Ernie Ludwig uh, making an event last week very nice to see ernie back on track here with the sim racers edge alpha series a couple of newcomers to the series this man right here in the 42 chad simpson he is a newcomer to the series he will be uh making his series debut here tonight he will be one of the drivers that will be starting from the back in his VRS, number 42, Delara IR18. IR uh, Shane Loveridge will be one of those guys that will be starting from the back as well. Same with Joe Morganti, Jose Vigera as well in the 42. Those guys will be starting from the back, seeing as though they did not start the initial attempt for this series. They will be. Uh, starting from the tail end, you are seeing uh, on track right now, that is the 28 of William Fletcher circulating the racetrack, as we've only got about a minute and a half left until this race will kick off. As this session continuing to wind down here coming up next week for this series will be the irish hills 300 155 laps for michigan international speedway uh, then we go to a short track to round out the month of april the iowa field of dreams 200 will be at iowa speedway 200 laps there and uh, if you're enjoying the endurance for beginners race uh, from Silverstone, no, on May 5th, we will be going there with this series, the British Grand Prix uh, from Silverstone. The current Silverstone layout uh, is where round 12 of this season series will take place. Then Texas Motor Speedway for 144 laps on May 12th. The second annual Indianapolis 500 will take place on May 19th and then a well-deserved off week for these drivers after running a 500 mile endurance race essentially uh the milwaukee mile 200 laps around the milwaukee mile on june uh june 2nd and then the championship race on june 9th at atlanta motor speedway 195 laps to close out the season if the championship is not already decided by that point so with the session coming to an end here, we will go to the grid for tonight's 175 lap, uh, 170 lap, pardon me, continuation of what we started back a month ago. Starting on the pole will be Chris Samard and Nate Siefker will sit in the second position. Again, these are the running results 
as of lap number 30 of the race a month ago. Bentley Glazer and Brett Beasley will make up row two. Mike Randy Sr. and Jackson Bell will sit in row three. Row four will go to Jeffrey Roulette and Tim Bates. Row five to Jeff Hollingsworth and Butch Davis. Charles Woods and Carl Burke will make up row number six. Row seven will go to Dan Brasington and William Fletcher. Row eight goes to Paul Crumry and Jason Ducksworth. Tyler Bloom and Michael Bourne will make up row number nine. Row 10 will see Jeffrey Bogan and Johnny Antonucci. Chris Walker and Kevin O'Brien will be sat in row 11. Row 12 goes to Shane Loveridge and Jose Vigera. Chad Simpson and Joe Morganti will make up the 26-car field from row 13 here this evening. So as the cars get set, on track right now, there is Chris Samard, his championship rival, will be right to his outside flank as Nate Siefker, again, looking to try to pad that 57-point lead in the standings as much as he possibly can as we enter the second half of this second season. Again, Siefker looking to win his second consecutive championship in this series as we start to wind down into the second half of this second season. Pace car getting set to duck off, coming out of turn number four. Chris Samard, Nate Siefker leading the way. Brett Beasley, uh, Brett Beasley and Bentley Glazer. Glazer, who won the pole for this race back a month ago, will start in third. Green flag is in the air. The Miami Gardens 300 is underway. Oh, already spinning. That is Jeffrey Roulette. Charles Woods also losing some time. Jeffrey Roulette. Spinning off, coming through turn two. The green flag will stay out. But for Jeffrey Roulette, that has already put him way back. And Tyler Bloom as well, I believe, has had an issue. There is Tyler Bloom. Down in the front straightaway. Well, it's a bad start for Voodoo. Is back up at the front here, Chris Samard. Currently holding the lead of this race. Boy, Brett Beasley. Oh, watch that front wing. I'm not sure who that was. That I believe that might have been. It was Mike Grandy in the 12 that ran over that bit of carbon fiber. Nate Siefger now taking the race lead up here at the front. But a lot of action going on here all over this Homestead Miami Speedway. Samard will retake the race lead. First, let's take a look back and see what happened with Jeffrey Roulette here on the opening lap. There's Roulette on the inside and that orange and black machine just gets on the apron trying to give people room on the outside. Fortunately for him, does not hit anything. Tyler Bloom, however, was not so lucky. This coming out of turn four may have gotten a little help. He certainly did. Off the front end of Johnny Antonucci in the 13. Here is Antonucci, and boy, there's that's all it takes. No more front wing for Antonucci. And there is Tyler Bloom, but back up to the front. There are the front two. Chris Samard and Nate Siefker currently leading the way here and in all of these moves. The biggest mover so far is Siefker looks to the inside for the race lead here coming to complete lap number six. Chad Simpson in the 42, the series debutante, up 10 positions already from where he had started. Back in the 25th position, up into 15th, Chris Walker, not so shabby either. 
Him trying to defend from William Fletcher here in the 28. Walker up 10 positions as well. And the man who currently sits in fourth place in the standings, Jeffrey Bogan, sitting right behind him. This is a very big redemption here for Chris Walker. Walker, who had crashed in the first 10 laps in the original running of this race a month ago, now up and battling in 11th spot, just outside the top 10. As these two have broken away up here at the front, Chris Samard, Nate Seifker, one and two, then have to go back a further two seconds to find Mike Grandy, who currently sits in the second position, uh, the third position, pardon me, Jackson Bell and Butch Davis about a second beyond that. As we see these three now battling for position, Jackson Bell, Butch Davis, and Brett Beasley. Three-way battle for the fourth spot as we take a look a little bit further back, just outside the top 10. That's Paul Crumry on the outside line in the number three. Trying to work his way up to Charles Woods. And he will work his way up and around Charles. As Paul Crumry moves up into the ninth position. Crumry's worst effort of the season by far and away was his effort at Kentucky in the second round of the season. From there on, Paul has been a model of consistency in this series thus far. Paul having another very good start at least to this race, expecting tire wear to become a factor later on. Certainly Crumry, a very good start. Bogan and Walker now, this is a battle for the 12th position. Walker's trying to keep it. Bogan wants it. And again, it just seems though that outside has the advantage as it pertains to being able to hold off a run on the inside. Battle for fourth now, Butch Davis and Jackson Bell. These two guys going at it. Pretty much dead even at the line there were these two. And that is allowing Grandy and the top two to get away. Brett Beasley actually starting to fall away from these two. As I just saw, Bentley Glazer has had a problem. We'll see what happened to Bentley here. As Bentley, I think, may have had a disconnect. I'm not seeing... I'm not seeing an external issue as if a spin or an off track here in my track map is... Boy, that's Brett Beasley! Hard into the inside wall in the number 69. It's almost as if his steering quit. Oh, no, he hit the wall, just pushed a little too hard, and then broken suspension. Didn't matter how much he turned to the right, that car was not correcting itself. And Brett Beasley now crashing out of a top five position as both Samard and Seifker continue to battle up here at the front. Seifker trying to work that outside line. Can't quite get it to work as Crumry and Woods continue to scrap for the ninth spot. Or pardon me, for the eighth spot now with Beasley having had his incident. A lot of things these guys can do on these cars. Weight jacker. 
anti-roll bar. These guys can certainly try to figure out the handling of this car as we ride on board with Paul Crumry looking back at Charles Woods. In a battle for the eighth position between these two. Top getting pretty spread out here. It's the middle of the field you have to worry about as Jeffrey Bogan now starting to really have to worry about Chad Simpson in the 42. As we take a look on board of Simpson's car. Right on that right rear pod. Essentially wheel well of that number 42. Simpson, a series debutante. You can just hear how much he's having to let out of the gas to stay on that inside line around this racetrack thus far. And Chad, biggest mover of the race thus far, up 13 positions from his 25th place starting spot. Make it 14 spots. Simpson has moved up. Still just in front of them. Paul Crumryan, oh, there's a big wreck there. That looks to be Joe Morganti. It is Joe Morganti. Still no caution. Was that Morganti or was that Duckworth? So Duckworth jumped into the pits. We'll take a look and see. I think Duckworth might have had a connection issue as well. Here's Morganti coming in for a pit stop. We'll see what happens here. This is him exiting the pit lane. I apologize for this. We'll see where... Morganti's problems lie. Looks to be a straight up pit stop for Morganti. Comes out between third and fourth. Or pardon me, fourth and fifth. Sets so Jackson Bell with him. And I guess the accident happens a little bit later for Morganti. Unfortunately, it did not show up on my my incident screener there. As we take a look back up at the front of this field, Chris Samard continuing to lead Nate Siefker. Siefker even said after Spa last week that Samard was going to be the guy to beat here this week, especially on older tires. as it appears as though we are having another slowdown, and I believe this is... I think we're having another fit of connection issues here because Butch Davis has dropped, Dan Brazenton, Johnny Antonucci. Yeah, we're having some more issues connection-wise here, and unfortunately it's coming a little bit earlier this time. Now, there is a procedure for this in place now after last week, and to the best of my recollection, the procedure is... These guys will now all come into pit road. They will stop. They will try to get everyone circulated back into the position they were running in prior to the incident, uh, prior to the disconnects. trying to get confirmation here from what is uh, what is actually going on and this 
it would appear as though the ser they have gone into the the disconnection protocol is what it appears has happened here. So uh, that's that is what we're assuming. So these guys are going to bring it down into pit road. They're going to hold until all the drivers return. And they will try to get the drivers back into the position that they were in prior to the disconnect. So what we're going to do is we are going to take a moment here to confirm what is happening. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to be right back. You are watching the Sim Races Edge Alpha Series here on ESPN. Do not go anywhere. Noting it is between two drivers for this championship. One, Lubomir Moritz of Positive Sim Racing. One, Paul Ilbrink of course, Rackles Online. You are watching the Sim Racers Edge Alpha Series here on ESBN, and uh, as was confirmed to me during the uh, during the break, there we are, as I thought we were, under the uh, mass disconnect protocol. As we are waiting for drivers to get their laps back, getting back onto. The uh, the lap uh, the same lap as the leaders. They will then do two caution la They will do two pace laps, and then they will go back to green. And from what it looks like, the situation is not nearly as complex as it was earlier on. So it would appear as though that there is some sort of connection issue with Homestead that has uh, that has caused the issues here. Now we have not uh, we've not been told nor have we uh, nor did I ask honestly as to what would call for a race postponement here. But that is what we're doing right now, watching uh, Dan Brazington get back onto the proper lap that he is supposed to be on. Uh, he's going to do one more circuit at speed here and then bring it in. Everyone will go out and run a, a pace lap. 
bring it into pit road, and then another pace lap, and then back to green. So the lead that both Nate Seifker and Chris Samard had built up is now officially wiped out. We are right now working lap 28 of 170 here tonight. And nearly 60 laps into the original 200 lap distance. We thank everybody who is watching on YouTube and on our Twitch channel as well. As these guys now will go into pace laps. Everyone will come down into pit road, make their pit stops, another pace lap, and then back to green flag racing, we shall go. Take this time to remind you once again that coming up tomorrow is the DOB 410 Sprint Car Series at Lima Land. Immediately following that will be the, uh, the DOB Big Block Series from Cedar Lake. Uh, that is your DOB doubleheader tomorrow. The Circle B Diecast Super Speedway Series and E-Formula 3.5 uh, Series are both off this weekend. Our next event after Thursday night will be the Medieval Racing League running their Daytona 500. That race will start at 8 p.m. Eastern Time right here on ESPN. Then on Monday night will be the Rowdy Energy Cup Series from Richmond after their race a couple of nights ago from Martinsville. Uh, round number nine of their season, I believe, as well. As pit cycle, as the uh, pit stops are now coming in, Charles Woods deciding to stay out to lead a lap. So Woods will now come in. He will get his lap led here, and then most likely come in to service his Delara IRO eight, uh, IR18. Pace car currently right now is Charles Woods, who is coming into pit road here, so that will give pace car duties to Chris Samard. Top five as it sits are going to be Chris Samard, Nate Seifker, Mike Grandy, Jeff Hollingsworth, and Jackson Bell. Your current top five. Tim Bates, Chad Simpson, Jeffrey Bogan, Jose Vigera, and Chris Walker will round out the top ten. Vigera, Vigera and Simpson, both of those two, have done an absolutely fantastic job here tonight. Simpson up 17 spots on debut here in this series, and Vigera running his third race of the year, up 14 spots up into the top 10, so a very good showing for these two as we are about to get out of the throughput protocol and get back to green flag action here. We'll be taking the green, expecting we're taking the green this time. We are going to take the green, working lap 31 of 170, one, uh, working lap 60 of the original 200 that were available. Now, if they were doing a NASCAR protocol to where you have to just complete halfway, that golden lap would be lap 70, and then a disconnect from there could possibly mean the end of the race. Samard leads them down. We are back to green flag racing. And boy, right away, Mike Grandy all over the back end of Nate Seifker. 
going into turn one, and the top five have completely checked out here. Jackson Bell, as Hollingsworth, I believe Hollingsworth has now dropped. He has. So now Jackson Bell will take the fourth position. Tim Bates into fifth. Well, that's a tough break for Jeff Hollingsworth. Just gotten up into the top five as well. This little battle right here, though, behind Bates. Bogan, Simpson, Vigera battling for sixth. Chris Samard just setting the fastest lap of the race. Jeffrey Roulette matching that fastest lap of the race in the number 66. Roulette has recovered up to ninth spot after spinning. I believe Chris Walker's had a uh, a disconnect as well, or at least he's returning from one. And that's a shame for Chris Walker. I mean, this has been... This has just been a shame in general here that this series is once again dealing with this same issue at the same racetrack, and that would mean at least there is a common denominator here. And it would be the racetrack is having some sort of connection issue. All other variables have maintained the same all season long, and this is the... This is the racetrack where we've seen most of the issues. Well, all of the issues as far as connection goes. Mike Grandy trying to catch points leader Nate Seifker just ahead of him. Mike Grandy. Having a very good run in that 12. He really came onto the scene last year in Michigan. It's the track we head to next week with the series. Put on a great show at Michigan. Was very competitive right up until the very end. Picked up by Voodoo Racing over this offseason between seasons one and two and has done an absolutely fantastic job now battling his teammate and current championship leader. Watching this battle a moment ago between Bogan, Simpson, and Roulette. Roulette has fallen off of this battle. Make that now a battle between Bates, Bogan, and Simpson. As the battle for fifth rages on between these three. Simpson very close to the back end of Bogan. Not as close, however, as Paul Crumry <laughs> and Will Fletcher are to each other. Carl Burke just behind them, currently sitting a lap down in the 53. Now, he has not gotten a lap back because, well, one, a caution has not come out, and two, he has not had a disconnect. Burke, however, is the first car that is not on the lead lap. As Crumry defending from Burke, Bogan and Simpson now a little bit further ahead. Simpson can't quite make the move going into turn three. And he will have to try again down here at the other end of the racetrack as Seifker and Grandy still having this battle. Jeff Hollingsworth, you can see behind Grandy, has returned. Unfortunately, running a good eight laps down now in the 23rd position after his disconnect. And the caution has come out, as I believe Carl Burke. Yep, oh, that's a big incident with Carl Burke. You see bits of carbon fiber all over the racetrack. We'll try to see what happened to Burke. Racing with Butch Davis, and oh, those two coming together. 
hard incident between Davis and Burke. Here's though Davis just, oh yep, Burke just lost it coming out of two. And Butch Davis, unfortunately an innocent bystander there, gets caught up in it. From overhead, and you can see, wow, that's a big twitch from Burke. Everyone able to avoid both stricken cars. As we get you back down to the racetrack, guys deciding to stay out. Tim Bates being the first of the drivers deciding to stay out. Everyone else deciding to come in, and Nate Seifker is going to win the race out of pit road over Chris Samard and Mike Grandy. So it will be Bates, Roulette, Crumry, Antonucci, Woods, Bourne, and Loveridge. The drivers that at least initially decided to stay out, Loveridge will bring it to pit road now. Same thing with Antonucci and Woods. Bates, Roulette, Crumry, and Bourne deciding to test their luck by staying out. So if, you're, if you're looking at guys here that have fallen way down the order, and there are a couple, Jose Vigera, we saw was one of those guys that was up towards the front and making moves. We actually commented several times how many positions he's made up from the start. Uh, Vigera, Hollingsworth, those guys, uh, those guys have had disconnects since the the throughput protocol, and I think what they're doing now is they're going to try to allow Hollingsworth to gain as many laps back as he possibly can under this caution with pass uh, with wave arounds. Hollingsworth running fourth at the time of his disconnect. The question is going to be how many will they get? Vigera has not yet returned. As Hollingsworth tries to get as many laps back as he possibly can. Kevin O'Brien entering pit road down at the other end of the racetrack in the number 84. O'Brien put together a very good run last week at Spa Frankershaw. And if I remember correctly, had a top five finish last week, and I do remember correctly, started fourth, finished fifth. Did O'Brien? So as we work our first official caution of the evening, we would like to remind you that tonight's broadcast is sponsored by DieCastNuts.com. Post your own DieCast collection, add or trade to it in the shop, and see other members' collections at DieCastNuts.com. And on Facebook, by searching Diecast Nuts, that's nuts with a Z, DieCastNuts.com. And by Rocket Racing Setups. Rocket Racing Setups is one of the leading setup builders for the iRacing community. Find dirt and asphalt setups, tuning guides, fuel sheets, and much more at RocketRacingSetups.com today. Tonight's race is also brought to you by your series sponsor, Turn Racing. And the series thanks you for your continued support. About ready to go green here. From the Homestead Miami Speedway. 
And once we do, we will take lap 47 as Jeff Hollingsworth still trying to get laps back. I believe he's going to be one or two short of being back on the lead lap at this point. As we get set to go green for the second time here today. Second official time, third time if you've been following the race. Tim Bates, Jeffrey Roulette, Paul Crumry, and Michael Bourne. The top four drivers did not pit under this caution flag. Pace car is off. Bates is down and away, and we are back to green flag racing here, working lap 47 of 170. Big jump by Bates. Michael Bourne. Getting mugged off by Nate Siefker and Chris Samard. Samard has not had much time in that car in traffic here, so he might struggle to find the feel for the car at least early. Led all, but I believe the first five or six laps on the first attempt at this race back on the 17th of March, and now has already gotten around Nate Siefker for the fourth position. Timothy Bates, your current leader, and we'll take a look. Graphics working, yay, yay. <laughs> As if you've been watching these last couple of broadcasts, this graphic has not been working properly at all. Uh, Bates, Roulette, and Crumry both coming into pit, all three of them, pardon me, coming into pit on lap 28. The rest of these guys Pitting under the caution flag here on lap 42. Jackson Bell is apparently just returning from a throughput as well. Again, and this is bad on my part as we watch Siefker and Samar do battle. Trying to find a way around Paul Crumry in the three. Samard working, uh, pardon me, Siefker working that outside line is going to get the run coming off the corner. And he will make the move as this battle for third really heating up between the two guys who have run one and two all race long. See Tim Bates doing everything he possibly can Watch him on this straightaway. He's going to jump right down to the inside, try to break that draft. As far as I've heard, there was no ruling against the Indy Snake, which is exactly what you're seeing there. Bates just trying to break that toe down the back straightaway. Trying his best to... Try to pull that gap out as Seifger now has somewhat lost Samar to the tune of about half a second. As we look back off of Seifger's Delara, is Paul Crumry in front of him? And as I said before, this is the first time really the entire time we've been here at Homestead, whether it had been a month ago, or whether it be now, Samard has not found himself behind too many drivers. I believe Chris Walker's had a problem in the number 23. We'll take a look and try to see what happened to him. He's just going to pull it off here, I think. Yes, he does. So he just pulls his number 23 off. Paul Crumry making a pass for position on Jeffrey Roulette. Makes sense, seeing as though Crumry, one of the big movers now, this pit stop and this pit cycle has certainly helped that. But still, he was making moves during the first phase of this race, up 13 spots from where he started. 
in the number three. Biggest mover of the race right now, Chad Simpson up into seventh spot on series debut has done an absolutely fantastic job up into the seventh position from eight uh, from the 25th place starting spot give this man the ability to qualify and i have a feeling that <laughs> these guys are gonna have a run for their money as bates crumry and roulette have all bunched up here battle for the lead right there in the middle of your screen bates Crumry, Roulette. Again, still all of these guys did not come in to pit under this most recent caution flag. And now here comes Paul Crumry trying to stick his nose under. Can't quite do it. Boy, he had a very good look at Bates for the lead. However, could not make it work. And now he's going to go to the outside to try to pull off that momentum run on the outside line. Looks as though he will do just that. So we ride on board with Jeffrey Roulette and Paul Crumry takes the race lead. It's also worth noting that with everything that has happened over the course of, of this race and, and what happened back on March 17th, all of the points that were on offer back on March 17th have transferred over to this race. So Samard's points for leading a lap uh, do transfer over to this week and Bentley Glazer's points for leading a lap and getting the pole uh, do transfer over as well as Crumry now starting to run away a little bit from Timothy Bates. Jeffrey Roulette now getting passed by Nate Seifker in the one. Chris Samard is right up here as well as this top five have broken away running multiple lines and Mike Grandy is about a second and a half off just watching. They're working lap 62 of 170 is already Seif Chris dispatched of Tim Bates and is now working on Paul Crumry. Crumry not giving up that position easily though in that number three. And now we'll do just that as those older tires now starting to show their wear as Seif running on 15 lap fresher tires. Able to make the move past the three, and Seifker has a really golden, a real golden opportunity to try to get up and away from Chris Samard, who has not made his way through the field in the same way that Samard has. Chris Samard still running in that fifth position. Had a very quick car up in the race lead. However, beyond that, it has not shown the same muscle to the point where now Mike Randy is really starting to catch him. Paul Crumry has not let Nate Seifker go for the race lead. Tim Bates, however, has fallen about a second behind these two up at the front and is now getting a battle from Jeffrey Roulette in the 66. Roulette can't quite make the move. Now he's going to try going into turn three. And once again, just can't quite get it done. Very, very close going into turn one and after the early connection issues really haven't seen too many more issues Jeff Hollingsworth had his drop got about seven spots back during that caution flag or got about seven laps back during that caution flag Jackson Bell were assuming had a connection issue Chris Walker has pulled the car over and oh, a big slide there 
from Jackson Bell. What a way to save that race car. The driver of the 25 of Jackson Bell doing a fantastic job right there of making that save through one and two. Bates has now come into pit road. Makes sense, about 40 or so laps, nearly 50 laps on his set of tires there. As we are coming up on the halfway point of the original 200 lap distance, we're just two laps away from that. And again, my apologies, I just, we have gone into the disconnect protocol once here tonight, and I should have asked if there was a another postponement or another disconnect issue, what the, uh, what the protocol for possibly canceling this race would be as Paul Crumry pulls it into pit road. It's Michael Bourne coming in right after him as I believe Jackson Bell has had a bigger problem. Yep, there is Bell. You can see him in the foreground. Oh, there he is. So Jackson Bell certainly had a problem. Could he possibly? Oh, he's already in the fence. Question here being, could he possibly have tuned himself out? So we'll take a look at, oh, he's all right. There. Boy, just can't quite get him. <laughs> uh, boy, we'll try one more time here. To get Bell, this is him passing Bates coming out of pit road. Battling here with Hollingsworth and loses the back end again. And boy, just snaps and destroys that car on the outside wall. And that could be, as I was saying, that could be a matter of tuning himself out with the weight jacker. Too much, too much weight, too much anti-roll bar. These cars don't typically snap like that, especially around this racetrack, which is so big on tire wear. So we look back at a battle for fifth position between Chad Simpson and Jeffrey Bogan. Simpson in the 42, Bogan in the 21. As Jeffrey Roulette pits out of the top five. Boy, Bogan, wow, that was close from Bogan just does get around the outside of Simpson and just does take that fourth position. Bentley Glazer there as well. Now Glazer had had a disconnect very early on in the race. Was one of the drivers during the caution flag that was able uh, during the uh, throughput protocol that was able to get back on the lead lap and has now marched his way back up into the sixth position. Remember, Glazer sat on the pole for the original running here a month ago. So we know his race car is good. As he and Chad Simpson are having quite the battle here at the moment. This battle, however, happening a mere nine seconds behind this man. Nate Siefker, who had won the race off of pit road. After the caution on lap 42. And has been able to run away with this race thus far, holding a two second lead on Chris Samard. Samard with a further five second advantage on Mike Grandy, who has Butch Davis behind him. Davis currently sitting one lap down after getting involved with Carl Burke that brought out the one and only official caution that we have had here tonight. So Davis showing he does have a fast race car. 
if he can get back into position to where he can use it. Makes the move under. Just beyond that is Jeffrey Bogan, Chad Simpson. There as well as, boy, it looked as though Simpson was just trying to save that car for a bit because he has come back with a brand new vigor on the 21 of Bogan. And Simpson riding on board with has appears as though he has found new life in that car. As you can just see Bogan there off to the left side of your screen. Try to get that run, there he goes. There's Bogan, there's the move done. Chad Simpson with that VRS, Virtual Racing School sponsor. On the side pods of that, number 42. As Seifker and Samard both coming into pit road and look at the pace that Samard had coming into pit road. However, I think it might cost him as Mike Grandy comes in as well. But boy, Samard had one heck of a pit entry if it was legal. The pit stop between the two. There goes Seifker, and yep, Samard was a little too vigorous. And unfortunately for him, that's going to cost him 40 seconds, which at a place like this is essentially two laps. Let's take a look at how... Boy, Samard was on it coming into pit road. Probably just centering the box. Samard was really on it. Look at how much, so much pace. Look at how much quicker he is than Seifker. And Seifker, boy, he had to really be on his toes because if he didn't make that little jink to the left, Seifker would certainly have gotten hit. Watch this little jink to the left here that he's going to make. Whoop, and there goes Samard. Samard trying to do to Seifker what Seifker did the entire race at Gateway as the caution has come out here. And this caution will be for Kevin O'Brien. See what happened to O'Brien here. Oh, he just got back on track and backed it into the fence, unfortunately, for the Aussie. And that will be official caution number two. As the leaders now come into pit road be seeing a lot of guys getting wave arounds. We will sort that all out for you when we return. You are watching the Sim Racers Edge Alpha Series right here on ESPN. Don't go anywhere.
You're watching the Sim Racers Edge Alpha Series, and the man you're seeing on screen right now, the number one of Nate Siefker, is currently your race leader uh, when this whole thing cycles out, and all of the cars that are in front of him will be taking wave arounds, uh, including this man here, the number 77 of Chris Samard, who was caught for speeding on pit road during that first set of green flag stops and that will certainly anger him for multiple reasons uh, the least of that being is now his chances at closing any significant gap on nate siefker in the championship has effectively fallen by the wayside and before we go green here just quick update there are the point standings coming into tonight Siefker with a 57 point gap here as we enter the second half of the season over Chris Samard Jeff Hollingsworth has had his disconnection issues he's back on the lead lap now and up into the 11th position as we get set to go back to green flag racing, Nate Siefker leads them down. We are working lap 89 of 170 here this evening. A little bit past halfway is, boy, a big gaggle of cars here in the middle of the field. Mike Grandy Sr. among those in the number 12. Down there on the inside line in that black and white number vo in uh, that black and white number 12 for Voodoo Racing, battling with Paul Crumry now. He was in third place when the pit stop cycle started. Now battling with Butch Davis as Grandy tries to move himself back up into his top three position. Bentley Glazer. Sitting now in second position after his throughput. The aforementioned Jeff Hollingsworth battling with Tyler Bloom. That for the 12th position as Hollingsworth has already lost a spot off of this restart. Going back up now, Grum, uh, Crumry and Grandy. Still not letting that battle for the sixth position go. As Grandy finally pulls ahead. And will try to stay ahead. One car in the middle of this group, and that is the man that uh, Butch Davis is trying to pass right now. That is Michael Bourne. These two are battling for the honor of being the first car not on the lead lap. These two right now battling for the 17th and uh, 16th and 17th positions. Chris Samard is on the same lap as these guys. As boy, Butch Davis just does make the move. As Mike Grandy now getting into the mix. Grandy splitting Bourne and Davis. Now here is Chris Samard, not that far away, only about half of the front straightaway away. That looked like Bourne may have caught the wall going into turn one. Didn't affect him all that much. As the 19 of Michael Bourne trying to keep pace with the cars around him. Jeffrey Bogan and Tim Bates running side by side. This for the eighth position. Bogan right now coming into tonight fourth in points. Doing an incredibly good job. here this evening up 11 spots from where he started he was one of the guys that crashed out early back in the original running of this race a little bit further behind Hollingsworth has gotten around Tyler Bloom and has now set his sights on Charles Woods in the 40 as we ride off the back of Woods' is number 40. United States Postal Service, Delara. As 
several retirements to report here tonight. Of the 26 drivers that had taken part in this race, only 19 remain. Uh, Jason Duckworth apparently had missed the start of this race as Hollingsworth now gets his way around Charles Woods. Tyler Bloom now will have an opportunity at Woods. Jason Duckworth missed the start. Brett Beasley, I believe, had a throughput and just never returned back on lap 16. Joe Morganti had a big accident uh, ending his night early. Jose Vigera, we see in the YouTube chat here, had a throughput while running in the eighth position. Throughput coming on lap 34. Carl Burke brought out the caution on an accident between him and Butch Davis. Back on lap 40, Chris Walker pulled it off and was done after lap 53. And we saw the accident with Jackson Bell that eventually ended his night. Take a look at Paul Crumry still battling with Jeffrey Bogan, able to get the position away now from Bogan. It's this midfield battle here between... Bogan, uh, Crumry, Bogan, Bates, and Hollingsworth. Matter of fact, add Tyler Bloom into this mix as well. Very close battle, very good battle between these five drivers, all of them within a half a second of each other. Crumry, started, Crumry and Bogan starting to pull out a little bit on Bates. But other than that, it's been nothing but very close racing and very good racing between these guys. Going back up to the front, Nate Siefker currently leads this race by three seconds over Bentley Glazer. Remember, Glazer had a throughput early, put him back, and has now just made his way back up into the second position. Will Fletcher having a solid run right now, running in the third spot. Chad Simpson, series debutante, running fourth, up 21 spots from his 25th place starting spot. Here tonight, Jeffrey Roulette had a spin on the first lap of the race that did not cause a caution. He has brought himself back up into the fifth spot. Mike Grandy Sr., who was running in third prior to the second caution of the night. Currently running in sixth, and then this battle we've been watching between Paul Crumry running in seventh, Jeffrey Bogan in eighth. Right behind him there, Tyler Bloom in ninth, and Jeff Hollingsworth in tenth, and I believe... Tim Bates. Now did Bates, now the question is, did Bates come in for a pit stop? Okay, Bates did come in for a pit stop, okay. With how many guys have had throughput issues tonight, it's, unfortunately that's what the first thought is, is here's Charles Woods and Dan Brasington in a battle for 11th. Brasington has really closed Charles Woods in. See that gap over the last six laps has really come down from a second all the way to what it is now. And a little bit of help from Kevin O'Brien, Shane Loveridge now in this battle for position as well, as well as Johnny Antonucci is here in the number 13. Antonucci also caught up in a first lap incident between himself and Michael Bourne. These four drivers battle for the 11th spot, working on lap 108 of 170 here tonight. We are well past the original halfway point. 
of 200 here, almost 40 laps clear of that as Bogan and Crumry really putting on a show, these two. Having a very good run indeed are both Crumry and Bogan. Still running side by side as Michael Bourne will head to pit road. Shane Loveridge and Dan Brasington also in battle as well. And because of this, Brasington has fallen off the back of Charles Woods. Loveridge having to give up that fight at least for the moment against Dan Brasington. Look off the back of Brazenton's number 29. And we certainly know the father-in-law is watching as he always is. Trying to will Dan on in this battle here against Shane Loveridge. As Loveridge, once again, just cannot quite get the position. Paul Crumry has been in and out of pit road. Battle for third really heating up now. It's between Will Fletcher, Ch uh, Chad Simpson, and Jeffrey Roulette. Here for these three. And now Simpson's going to go to the inside of Fletcher. Trying to take over that third spot. And Simpson has had one heck of a car here this evening. And is going to make the pass on Will Fletcher. Simpson up 22 spots from his starting position of 25th. here tonight and is now Fletcher having to defend from Jeffrey Roulette. Roulette not able to make a move. Mike Grandy is under pressure but not for position. As the two drivers behind him, both Chris Samard and Butch Davis, one lap down. However, Bogan and Bloom are battling for position just behind them. Bogan has up and left Jeff Hollingsworth. And now Bogan will get around Tyler Bloom with relative ease. It's the RDR entry. Running fourth place in standings, now running seventh place in race. As Tyler Bloom for Voodoo Racing. Sits eighth, Jeffrey Roulette coming into pit road. Will Fletcher now having to battle Mike Grandy. As pit stops are very much certainly coming up here. As ever since getting out of pit road first. Back on lap 42, Nate Siefker has been untouchable. Man currently holds a 6.4 second lead over Bentley Glazer. And you can see there over the last six laps how that lead has grown. So that has now come up to... 7.2 seconds, and we'll see where Glazer is on the racetrack there. Just coming out of turn four. Look on the track map, car number. You're looking for car number one and 87, and that is the visual distance between the two drivers. Really not much in the way as far as traffic between those two. Now, Glazer's about to catch some. 
in the form of Kevin O'Brien. There he is in the 84, and Chad Simpson is right there. Simpson only a second off, and he has been absolutely flying in that number 42. He's been quicker. That's, that's Simpson quicker than Glazer every single lap each of the last five. And now as Siefker goes into pit road. For what he is hoping will be the final time. Still have 50 laps to go here tonight. Siefker up, down, and away. He's going to be behind Shane Loveridge, which I'm sure is going to be less than entertaining for him. Mike Grandy now coming into pit road. We'll see what happens now with Bentley Glazer, Tyler Bloom, Will Fletcher, Charles Woods all in pit road here. As Glazer will stay out, that is the distance between him and Seifker now. Seifker is a lap down at this point, as he would be by making a pit stop. Or pardon me, he's on the tail end of the lead lap right now. One and two on your screen right now, Glazer and Simpson. You can tell going down the back straightaway when these guys are going to come in. These guys are, it is mandatory that you have to take the access road in turn three in order to get into pit road. Man on the freshest tires as it sits right now in the top four of drivers that have not pit is Jeff Hollingsworth who came into pit on lap 87. Butch Davis into the lane. Dan Brazenton you see there coming out. Chad Simpson starting to fall off a little bit, and the question is going to be, as Glazer comes into pit road, are these guys running in a slower engine mode to try to save fuel to make this a one-stop race? Hollingsworth, OGR teammates, Glazer and Hollingsworth both into pit road now. And we'll see right now what Chad Simpson's strategy is. Simpson came in on 84, and between him, Glazer, and Hollingsworth, that is the soonest of anyone who came into pit road. Johnny Antonucci has since been in pit road as well. Antonucci coming in on lap 124. Coming down to just over 40 laps to go here, and we're going to see if Simpson has made a glorious move or not as he comes into pit road here. With 43 laps to go, can he make it the rest of the way on fuel? Is Seifker going to be able to make it the last 50 laps on a tank of fuel? And again, these guys do have different fuel modes that they could put these cars in. As we'll see, here is Simpson coming out of pit road. You're going to see the number one flash by up at the top of your screen here in just a moment, or he already has gone by. There is Seifker on the back straightaway already. My goodness, these cars are quick. <laughs> right on board here for a moment with Nate. Throw on our virtual dashboard. Yeah, going a, a casual 200 through turns three and four. It's the downforce and turning ability of these race cars as Michael Bourne now is going to create one heck of a roadblock and Stiefker involved in it, but it looks as though he's going to get lucky. Or is he? What is the status of that right rear? Oh, no, he did get damage out of that. Michael Bourne 
is in pit road now. Bourne has completely pulled it off, and Seifker, I know, is not going to be happy about that at all. Just saying that Michael Bourne is going to be one heck of a, uh, a roadblock at the moment. And Bourne just lost it going into turn three. Try to see what happened here is Seifker. We might be a little bit early on this here. See, there's Michael Bourne right there. We might be a lap or, yeah, we're going to be a lap or two a little too early here, unfortunately. Uh, let's try here. There's Bourne already in the wall. Let's try to go back a little bit further than that. Here's Bourne. Just not sure. Boy, he hits the wall going into turn three, and it looked as though that completely broke the suspension, but we've seen that with iRacing here lately, where the suspension doesn't actually go. But Seifker now has lost the race lead to Jeffrey Roulette and now is going to definitely be forced to pit as that right side side pod is hanging on by a thread right now. And I am sure he is fuming inside of that car. You can see the damage there. We'll go back and see it again here. This is from Seifer's point of view, and you can just see how wild Bourne is. And just right there. And from there on, that is a killer as far as straight line speed goes. We saw that with Jackson Bell at Daytona. Seifker now comes out of pit road. And for Seifker, that is going to relegate him from the race lead all the way down into 16th position. Seifker was going for three in a row here tonight. Had one at Chicago, had one at Spa last week. And looked as though he was well on his way to victory here at Homestead. And it all blew up. The question now is going to be who can and who can't make it on fuel expecting that Jeffrey Roulette cannot, as we'll take a look at our fuel graphic here one more time, if anyone is going to be in a position to make it, the one who has the best chance at it is the 42 of Chad Simpson. That would be one heck of a way Barring the series opener back at Auto Club last, uh, last season, no driver in the history of this series has won on debut. And Chad Simpson, if this fuel strategy works out right, mainly if this race stays green, which we've only had two cautions tonight, if this race stays green, appears to be a very real possibility is just in front of him is the battle for second between Bentley Glazer who will re-inherit the race lead after the expected pit stops of Roulette and Grandy is Mike Grandy running in second position now position change for sixth as Tyler Bloom and Paul Crumry swap locations. Checking back on Nate Seifker right in front of that battle for fifth. Seifker is about to catch Butch Davis. That is for position. 
between those two, and Seifker will now take over the 14th spot. Boy, Davis, though, not making it easy, is close, close, close between those two. Working with 30 laps to go here at the Auto, uh, here at the uh, Homestead Miami Speedway, pardon me, and Jeffrey Roulette right now is wondering how much fuel do I have and how slow do I have to go to be able to make it and still have enough fuel to fight. As you can see at the top of your screen, he has a 5.1 second lead over Bentley Glazer and Mike Grandy who are battling with each other for the second spot. And also, we saw him just a second ago right in front of the race leader. What appeared to be a horrendous day after a speeding penalty on pit road for Chris Samard has turned into a slight positive. And Samard and Seifger right now. And now Butch Davis is going to break that up. Samard running 13th, and this is the battle for 14th right here. And just in front of them is a very tight-knit group. This is the battle for, th uh, battle for second. Grandy holds on. Simpson has gotten around Glazer now. And Simpson, if anyone out of this quartet up at the top four can push, it is certainly Chad Simpson. As we showed just a moment ago, last came into pit on lap 127. Which by two laps is later than anybody else as Seeker now just flies by on the outside, leaving Butch Davis for chips. As Seifker now is going to try to gain back as much time as he possibly can just in case a caution does come out, and that has allowed... Bentley Glazer right up to the back of Chad Simpson and Seifker just grazing the wall going into turn three. Glazer and Simpson battling for the second position. And it's going to be Glazer's spot. Riding on board with the man who won at Kentucky in round number two of this season. His older style Formula One views. Right on the neck rest just behind the driver's left ear. You can see his target. That is Nate Seifker ahead of him. As Mike Grandy has come into pit road, so he knew he couldn't make it. Decided to give himself as much time as he possibly could afford to gain as much spots as he could. Jeff Hollingsworth getting past Paul Crumry, who is entering pit road. A big lockup from Paul Crumry, and Crumry has a couple of laps led here tonight. He's running up in the top three after the first caution. Very sil uh, solid night for the pilot of the number three. We go back up here. This is the battle for second between Bentley Glazer and Chad Simpson. Jeffrey Roulette starting to walk away a little bit. You see him passing and lapping Chris Samard. Roulette, I think, has gotten himself comfortable enough that he has saved fuel, enough fuel to be able to go through these last 20 laps and not have to worry, and if that is the case, then Chad Simpson is more than capable of going the rest of the way. Again, as we'll take a look at the top three here, their fuel strategy and pitch strategy. Roulette coming in on 116, Glazer on 125, Simpson on two, uh, 127. This is Will Fletcher coming out of pit road. Charles Woods on his way in to the lane. Shane, uh, Shane Loveridge on his way out of pit road as well. 
Jeffrey Roulette looking for his first win here in Sim Racer's Edge. Roulette scored podiums last year at the Indianapolis Road Course. Several top fives over the course of last season. So this would be just his second podium in the series. And unfortunately for him, it is all going to unravel as he has to come into pit road. Now that is going to put a lot of pressure on Chad Simpson and Bentley Glazer because these two now are battling for the race lead. Glazer nine lap uh, nine laps more fuel. Simpson 11 laps more fuel. And right now, these two only have a second advantage to Jeffrey Bogan, but they do have a fuel advantage over the pilot of the 21. We'll bring up that trusty fuel graphic one more time, uh, that pit stop graphic one more time. Simpson, the driver in the best position of the guys in the top five to win. And now here comes Bogan into pit road. So Bogan couldn't make it. Boy, this is gonna get really close now as this has turned into a fuel mileage race. And the best part of it is if we were here, if this was the 200 lap original distance, this, I don't think this would be the case. Jeff Hollingsworth has come into pit. Chris Samard up to fourth now. And Chris Samard is on the same lap as the leaders. However, Samard came into pit on lap 122. Nate Siefker is currently just ahead of your race leaders. Running in fifth, Jeffrey Roulette, who is on 20 laps fresher tires and more fuel than him, is now catching for what would be the fifth position. So Roulette might not be in too bad a spot here. Still. Johnny Antonucci in. Chris Samard following. We know Seifker does not have to pit again because of the incident between him and Bourne. The question is going to be these two. Will Bentley Glazer become the first man this season other than Nate Seifker to win multiple races? Or will Chad Simpson be the first driver in the series history to win on debut. As boy, this battle getting really close here as Chris Samard just out of pit road. We'd like to thank everyone who has come over from the Endurance for Beginners race here to see the final 10 laps of what has been a fantastic race here from the Homestead Miami Speedway. Watching right now a battle for the lead between Bentley Glazer and Chad Simpson. These two guys are 22 seconds ahead of Jeffrey Roulette and are trying to make it on fuel here without having to come into pit on these last eight laps. And now here comes Chad Simpson looking for the race lead. Simpson to the inside going into turn three. Can Glazer use the momentum off the outside 
to try to mount a charge. He cannot. And Chad Simpson now is seven laps away from making Sim Racer's Edge history. In the best position as far as drivers who pit in the 120s. And now Glazer is going to bring it into pit road. Bentley Glazer couldn't make it. And now what does that say for Chad Simpson? Those two came in three laps apart. And there are six to go. Simpson certainly has breathing room to turn that engine all the way down to try to conserve enough fuel to make it the rest of the way. He has a 19 second lead over Jeffrey Roulette at the moment. And for those of you who aren't quite sure, if you're watching your first IndyCar race, turning the engine down, meaning he can put that engine into a low rev mode to not push that engine nearly as hard as what he would be on a normal lap. However, he is still chugging along here. With coming to three laps to go, Simpson at this point has made his bed. Jeffrey Roulette has closed up by about a second on him. And Roulette is now four seconds clear of Nate Siefker. So that is your podium right now. Simpson, Roulette, and Siefker. Mike Grandy, four seconds behind Siefker. As we come down to two laps to go, Chad Simpson. has had a lot of obstacles thrown his way in this race. Started 25th on the grid of 26. On series debut, Chad Simpson is going to come around turns three and four. He has done enough to save the car, come across the line, and win here at the Miami Gardens 300 at Homestead Miami Speedway. What a way to announce that you are here. Roulette just crosses the line now. It's his second podium in the series. And Nate Siefker is going to be left wondering what could have been After his contact with Michael Bourne, still gets a podium and still extends that points lead by quite a margin as Chris Samard finishes in 14th. But right now, it is all Chad Simpson. Deepest starting position to win. First to win on debut. What a night. For the series debutante, Chad Simpson. And in a moment, we will get him in here for his post-race interview. And as a matter of fact, we will do that User right now. Your channel. Chad Simpson, your race winner, first race of the season with these guys, and you did it in style. What a strategy call there. How much fuel did you have left in order to make it across the line? 
Uh, I had 0.25 gallons in the tank <laughs> at the line and enough to do, what, two two donuts? So I got a little bit of a celebration. <laughs> well, you played the fuel strategy to perfection. What's, uh, how close was it uh, throughout the run to try to, one, try to battle with um, with Bentley Glazer and then just try to maintain. You knew you had that big lead, but how difficult was it to try to maintain just that enough fuel? Well, I was never battling. I started fuel saving before the last pit stop. I saw that we were really close, and I was able to push it one lap further than the game really wanted me to, and that was the difference because I could not have made it if I wasn't able to do that. Uh, I just sat in the draft. I was running mix five that whole final stint, the few laps before that final stint, and I was just watching the fuel that whole time. And you certainly did an absolutely fantastic job starting from 25th on the grid to win. Uh, next week, we head to Michigan. Uh, what are your thoughts going into quite a big, uh, quite a bigger track? here uh, as compared to Homestead and a track where drafting is going to be absolutely king. Uh, I love Michigan. Uh, it'll be a little scary if it's a pack race. Hopefully it's not a pack race because that can cause issues. But uh, Michigan's a good track for me and hopefully we can get a good result again. Well, I don't know how much better you can get than right now. Uh, anyone you want to thank before we let you go and celebrate? Oh, first, I'm new to the league, so I don't know all the admins, but thanks to the admins for dealing with all the, the disconnects and the procedures that we did to get people sorted out. Uh, they did a really good job with that. I want to thank my guys at Satellite Racing and my friends over at FBR Motorsports that helped me tonight. All right, Chad Simpson, the first ever debutante to win a Sim Racers Edge Alpha Series race. Congratulations on your big debut. Thanks, guys. User was moved out so of that the was your race winner, Chad Simpson. And in a moment, we will go to another guy who is... Uh, we've not seen quite often on the podium here. As I had mentioned, only got a podium once last year at the road course at Indianapolis, and that would be Jeffrey Roulette. User was moved uh, to the as channel. As we now bring him in. Jeffrey, you had one heck of a run here tonight. Unfortunately, you came up a little bit short, able to battle back to second. But other than that, a very good run here tonight. Yeah, that was a really exciting race. Good time. Uh, you probably remember I start. I started in ninth, and then uh, <laughs> on the start, I hit the apron and spun right at the beginning of the race, put me all the way to the back. So it was kind of a strategy race for me after that, kind of w watching my fuel, but also trying to find clean clean air, which was really important, you know, for this uh, for this race. Yeah, I uh, was going to ask you about that actually. How did that change uh, your mindset? going through this race knowing that okay i'm all the way in the back i'm alone now this track is wide enough so we're not going to get too many cautions how did that change your mindset going through the race being put right at the back right at the very beginning yeah i just made up my mind i was going to have a clean race and like i said look for that look for that clean air be try to be real predictable as i'm kind of you know I, I had good pace and i wasn't worried about that just but the thing was you know be predictable around the cars around you. That way you can get through there safely and also just kind of watch watch their lines and try to take the opposite lines to keep as much of that clean air as you could. It was gold tonight. Yeah, it absolutely was all night long. Uh, going into a super speedway essentially here for these cars, going into Michigan next week uh, for the Irish Hills 300. What are your thoughts going into uh, the big oval in Brooklyn, Michigan next week? Well, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, last season, I was on pole position in that race, and I feel pretty quick on that. Uh, it's a fun track, and I think it's good for these cars. And, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a great race. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, 
certainly looking forward to seeing what you can do. Anyone you want to thank before we let you go and celebrate your second podium in the series? I mean, I want to thank the league. I mean, I know they work real hard behind the scenes to put everything on. Um, thank you guys again, you know, for broadcasting and mostly because, you know, my mom, my dad, my, my wife, my kids, they all look forward to this every week and they really watch. So um, it's kind of fun. So I appreciate you guys. And well, we hope we put on the best show we possibly could. And you certainly held up your end here tonight. Your second place finisher, Jeffrey Roulette, just his second podium in the Sim Racers Edge Alpha Series. Bud, congratulations. Thank you very much, guys. User was moved out of your So channel. that is your second place finisher here tonight. And we're going to get a, uh, I'm pretty sure, a mixed emotion interview here as we bring up the man who finishes third place tonight. User was moved Nate to Nate Seifker. Nate, uh, it's, I'm sure it's not what you wanted after a very mind-boggling incident to be quite honest uh it's not a win but it's still a podium and with chris samard finishing all the way down in 14th and hollingsworth finishing 10th a very good points day points are points like you said so i'll take any when you have point nights this, that you gain you know not just a couple but a good chunk you know even if you don't win the race you can go away you know with as a, a positive so you know, tonight was fun. I will say the racing was awesome. I hope it was great on the broadcast. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, you could run different lanes. Uh, it was it was honestly a blast and everybody did an awesome job tonight um, on the racetrack and including, you know, our freak, uh, our um, connection issues that we had there. So everyone in the league did a fantastic job uh, working with us, listening with us and getting through that issue. It certainly was a very fun night. Uh, just want to go through that inner uh, that incident with you and Bourne. Uh, what did you see from your perspective? I mean, we rode on board with you uh, during that incident, but what did you see and what what did you think was going on, and how bad did that damage really affect you? I never saw it. I heard it and felt it. Um, I was passing him, and I heard a, I heard some. I heard the car hit the wall of his and. And I felt it hit me, and I was like, oh, I hope that wasn't too terrible. And then it was three seconds, a lap. Um, the only reason why I even stayed out was because I knew if I didn't make it to a certain point, I'd have to pit again. And that would be more damaging to my race. So I just stayed out, um, got to the number that I needed to get to, and then I I did that. And then I, uh, on the after I pitted, I um, got too over-ambitious and accidentally hit the wall again. So that damaged my car. That's why Jeffrey got around me. But Jeffrey did a great job. Chad nailed the strategy. Um, he's had a vision for the get-go there and uh, at the beginning of that entire green flag stint. And he stuck to it and made it work. So kudos to Chad for only having to do only one pit. Yeah, he did only one pit stop there. So that was pretty pretty impressive to see from Chad. And he, he had an awesome debut to the league tonight. Yeah, absolutely did. And one of only two drivers that actually completed the race to go on four pit stops, just him and Bates, the only two to do that. Going into uh, next week, the Irish Hills 300 at Michigan. Big racetrack, a lot of draft. What are your thoughts going into uh, the big track at MIS next week? I feel like if if you like, um, you know, fun multi-groove racing with a lot of drafting, that's going to be your race to watch. So it should be fun. I think it'll be very exciting to, to see how the different lanes work. Um, you know, I think uh, the guys that build the setup, I think they'll do a good job of, of producing a product that will uh, be good for race. And hopefully they do a good job. And, you know, hopefully we'll go in there and uh, myself, hopefully I'll have a good race. But, you know, hopefully uh, the league has a uh, strong showing like how we did tonight with how fun and uh, competitive, exciting the racing was. It certainly was an incredible night for racing. Anybody you want to thank before we let you go and celebrate a podium finish? Yeah, Frank, I'd like to fr thank uh, you, of course, for broadcasting. Uh, I know we're, you know, it was kind of chopped tonight with how the race, um, how we had to do it and, you know, the procedures. So I'm sure you did an awesome job of explaining, what, you know, what was going on. And you do an awesome job on the calls as well. I want to thank every single driver in this league. For, for being an integral part, you know, these guys believe in us and they believe in the product that we put out. So, you know, they've done a fantastic job uh, realizing our vision, believing in it and go, working with it. So kudos to them and thank the admin staff. You know, we, we make a lot of um, important decisions and we do a fantastic, I think we do a really good job of 
doing what's best for the league. Um, even if it's not in our own personal best interest, we'll still uh, be accountable and know what's best for the league. So they all do a great job, Chris. Oh, God, I forgot. Chris Dan Bush. I almost forgot who I work with. <laughs> that would have been a problem. And then also my teammates who had a great night. I, Chris didn't have a good night. Um, you know, Dan finished 13th. But Tyler Tyler and Mike bringing it home, you know, 6th and 4th, respectively. They did an awesome job tonight, and I couldn't be more proud of those guys. Yeah, they certainly did. Your third-place finisher here tonight and gaining a little bit more on his – 57 point lead going into tonight he could have this wrapped up before the indy 500 at this rate nate sievker congratulations on another podium bud oh thank you appreciate it user was moved out of your channel so that will wrap up the interview portion of the evening and what was an absolutely fantastic night of racing great racing all throughout the field all throughout the night it was just a great fun night a little bit of a hiccup there in the first 30 laps I uh, thought we were going to have the issue all night long, but turned out that it it leveled itself out and, and we were able to enjoy a great night of racing. But with that, we'll go to the finishing results here for tonight's Miami Gardens 300. Chad Simpson wins on debut. Jeffrey Roulette and Nate Seifer, the only three drivers to finish on the lead lap after the late pit stops were made. Uh, Mike Grandy Sr. and Jeffrey Bogan round out the top five Tyler Bloom Bentley Glazer Paul Crumry Tim Bates and Jeff Hollingsworth come home uh, in the top 10 Shane Loveridge Charles Woods uh, Dan Brazenton Chris Samard and Johnny Antonucci round out the top five Butch Davis comes home two laps down in 16th after the is uh, after the incident with Carl Burke put him down and out essentially for the remainder of the race, Kevin O'Brien comes home in 17th. Will Fletcher, Michael Bourne, and Jackson Bell round out the top 20. Chris Walker, Carl Burke, Jose Vigera, Joe Morganti, Brett Beasley, Jason Duckworth uh, round out the finishing positions here tonight and one through I'm sorry uh, 19 through 26 are considered DNFs here this evening. Once again, coming up the rest of the week here on ESPN, a double dip tomorrow night will be the DOB doubleheader as the 410 Sprint Car Series heads to Lima Land at 9 p.m. Eastern time. The DOB Big Blocks head to Cedar Lake uh, immediately following that. Nothing on Friday and Saturday. Then it is the Medieval Racing League, the Daytona 500 for them, coming up on Sunday night. And on Monday night will be the Rowdy Energy Cup Series from Richmond starting at 8.20 p.m. Eastern Time. So uh, for the ESPN crew, my name is Frank Marchese. Thank you very much for making us a part of your evening. And we will see you all coming up next week for the Sim Racers Edge Alpha Series for Michigan and tomorrow night for the DOB Doubleheader. Good night, everybody.